Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showcasing some really amazing battles I got with my rank 1 Greninja in Ultra League. These are legend battles at above 3000 elo, and I went positive in every set that I played with this team. This team is really consistent, and if you're looking to climb, I highly recommend you try it out. So before we get into it, I initially tried out the team with Trevenant lead instead of Nidoqueen lead, and I found that it was weak to a lot of things, especially when it came to dark types like Guzzlord, and it was also kind of weak to Dragonite lead, uh, Giratina, so I eventually switched it up. The battles you're seeing in the background right now are the losses I got when I had that Trevenant lead in the beginning, so I'm just going to let those play really quickly. But the team that I am going to be showing you in the rest of this video, and that I highly recommend you try out, is Nidoqueen lead with Galissapod safe swap, and Greninja in the back. So when I was looking at what Pokemon I should use to build a team around Greninja, I was thinking about what Greninja's weaknesses are. So it's weak to fighters, it's weak to fairy types, and I decided that Nidoqueen as a lead would be really good because it has that fairy type coverage, it has coverage for fighters, it can do decently against some of the dragon types. Uh, this team does struggle a little bit versus Giratina. You'll see that Greninja doesn't really have the bulk to take on Giratina by itself. And if Giratina has Ancient Power, then Galissapod is going to struggle quite a bit. Nidoqueen can also provide a little more bulk to the team, and it can cover Registeel, which both the back Pokémon are kind of weak to. So it can absorb Registeel's charge moves like Zap Cannon and Focus Blast, whereas uh, the other two can't really take those moves. And both Galissapod and Greninja can do a pretty good job of covering Nidoqueen's weaknesses. So some of Nidoqueen's biggest weaknesses are Swampert, Walrin, Ice types, any Ice type. But overall, I really like how balanced this team is, and I really liked how it performed. So I hope you guys try it out. Anyways, let's get into the battles. Alrighty, first game, we have Nidoqueen versus Gliscor on the lead. So already a lost lead, we instantly swap into Galissapod as our safe swap. And I'm just going to take these Night Slashes, they're going to be neutral. Uh, Earthquake is going to be resisted by Galissapod because of that bug typing. And I'm going to go straight for the Liquidation, hoping to get a, a debuff, and I get it, which is good. But I can easily take another Night Slash, so I'm going to let it go, and I get to another Liquidation. And we've already gotten one of his shields, which is really good, and we get the second shield, which is amazing. So I'm thinking that because he has a backline weak to Galissapod because he didn't swap out, uh, I'm going to assume that Greninja can also perform pretty well versus his backline. So I still have a shield left. Oh, and we get the boost. That's really good. Now we're up against the opponent's Greninja, and this is exactly where we want to see the Greninja because Nidoqueen is weak to water, and we definitely don't want to take Hydro Cannons from this on Nidoqueen. And because we have the boost and shield advantage, we can take this win. Now we're up against the opponent's Cresselia, and let's see how much a boosted Night Slash does. It does almost 50%. I was really surprised, but here I decided to catch the Grass Knot on Nidoqueen. I know I didn't really need to, but I thought maybe if he had Future Sight, I would need to make this play. Again, not a necessary catch, but we caught and we took the win. So you see how strong Galissapod is as a safe swap? It's pretty decent against a lot of things in the current meta. My opponent didn't really have a solid answer to it, so he just stayed in with his guy score and invested two shields and tried to win that lead, which worked in my advantage. So next game, we're up against a Greninja, so I'm going to try to catch the Hydro Cannon on our safe swap, which is Galissapod. Hydro Cannon is going to be resisted, and Galissapod has that X Scissor to threaten the Dark Typing of Greninja. Now we draw out the Grass Type, which is perfect. We drew out Roselia. Roserade, I mean, sorry. Roselia is a small one. <laughs> and I, I'm perfectly okay with taking a Leaf Storm here. He debuffed himself, so I'm also okay with taking the second Leaf Storm on Nido Queen. This is debuffed, so it's going to do a little bit less damage. And I really wanted to farm down all the way so that I could throw Poison Fangs at Greninja. Now, I am going to throw a second Poison Fang, and this is going to get his first shield. Now he's double debuffed and in the yellow, so I can definitely win the Greninja Mirror matchup. And he has Charizard in the back, so this is GG's. We are sitting really well in this matchup. We have double Hydro Cannon, and by the way, Greninja wins CMP over Charizard, so 
even if I CMP tie with him, I can still uh, hit the Hydro Cannon first. So yeah, this is uh, GG's for us. We take the win. This Hydro Cannon is going to be enough to KO because Greninja is pretty squishy even though the Hydro Cannon is resisted and we take that win. Okay, moving on to the next battle. We have Belossum on the lead. That's pretty spicy. But immediately he swaps out and because he swapped in, I can get to the Poison Fang before he gets to a Liquidation. So I'm going to throw that first to guarantee that I can win the switch. And now I'm just going to spam X Scissors and they're going to do more damage than his X Scissors are going to do to me because again, we got that debuff on him. So this next X Scissor should be enough to almost KO. Oh no, it KOs. And now we can also throw X Scissor at Blossom because Blossom is pure grass type and these are going to be super effective. So he manages to throw a Leaf Blade right before we get to the next one and he takes us out. Now we're going to bring in Nidoqueen and we have Greninja in the back. So here I got distracted a little bit. Uh, someone came and talked to me and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So uh, my move timing is poor and my decision making was poor. But uh, I got distracted a little bit, but it's okay because we still managed to get away with this win. And I'm going to throw Hydro Cannon on the Greninja. I can easily take another Night Slash or Hydro Cannon, but he chose to throw a Night Slash, which, which is an interesting choice because Hydro does more damage. But he brings back in Blossom. Uh, I think the Greninja has one HP left and I get the boost. We get to another Night Slash and this is going to draw out his last shield and my switch timer is up so I bring back in Nidoqueen. Easily take this Leaf Blade but I won't be able to take another Leaf Blade so I have to shield here. Saving that Greninja in the back in case I need it for his 1 HP Greninja but opponent quits here. Alright next battle we have Deoxys on the lead. Kind of a tricky lead because Deoxys is going to be doing super effective to Nidoqueen with his Psycho Boost and in the back. The Galissapod is going to take super effective from Rock Slide and Thunderbolt, and Greninja is going to be taking super effective from Thunderbolt. So uh, I need to figure out what this Deoxys in particular has. Now my opponent threw Psycho Boost and switched, and he brings in Greedent. Unfortunately, my two back Pokemon aren't bulky enough to take on Greedent by themselves, so I stay in with Nidoqueen a bit to do a little bit of chip damage and get that debuff from Poison Fangs. And then I decide to bring in Greninja because I think Greninja is going to be outputting a little bit more damage, especially since Galissapod has a resisted fast move and Hydro Cannon from Greninja just does a, a ton of damage. So I'm able to win switch and I have a Night Slash loaded up for Deoxys, which I throw here to get him into the yellow. And now I have to make a call. So I think he's going to have Thunderbolt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Glissopod, count to eight, and catch on Nidoqueen. And I hope that I make the right call. And yes, I caught the Thunderbolt. And now I just need to hope that this Poison Fang can take him out. Let's see. Oh, and he decides to shield. Okay, so he's definitely weak to Nidoqueen in the back. And he brings out Scrafty. So actually, I can take care of Scrafty with both the Pokemon I have left. So... We're fine either way. This is a definite win for us. Nidoqueen is going to debuff Scrafty and he's going for a power punch for some reason. Uh, I would have gone straight for the foul play because now he's just going to take more poison fang damage. But either way, he can't really win this anymore. Uh, I'm going to be able to get to that liquidation and because he's debuffed, the liquidation is going to be enough to KO or almost KO. We'll see if this does enough. Let's see. Yeah, it KOs. And I have an X's are loaded for Deoxys, so Deoxys is not going to be able to reach a move, and we take that win. Alright, moving into the next battle, we have Nidoqueen on the lead into Registeel. Perfect lead for us, but he swaps into Giratina, and my best answer for Giratina on this team is Greninja. And now you'll see where Greninja struggles a little bit because it is squishy, so it's going to be taking a lot of damage from those Dragon Claws. Now I'm going to try to spam these Night Slashes as much as I can. And I think we get a boost here. Yeah, we get a boost here, which is really good for us. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to invest a shield here to maybe try to win switch. And I'm going to throw this Night Slash, which is going to be definitely taking out the Giratina if he doesn't shield. But he decides to invest that shield. 
I know that Dragon Claw isn't gonna take me out, and I think I can reach the next Light Slash, and I do. So I throw it, but this is gonna take his last shield. So now we didn't win Switch, but we have a shield left, which could come in handy versus the Registeel. A Glissopod isn't gonna be completely useless against that Registeel. I decide to bring in Needle Queen to farm down because I'm just hoping that whatever they have in the back, Needle Queen with energy can take care of. And I was kind of right. It's Shadow Charizard, which is going to be pretty squishy again. And I'm just going to be able to spam out these poison things. And I decide to shield here because I know that against the Registeel, I could probably reach an Earth Power. So this next poison fang should take out the Charizard. And yes, it does. But now I'm in Focus Blast range, and Registeel is going to get there before I make it to the Earth Power, so I have to make a catch. And I make the catch on the Focus Blast, taking it on Galistapod, soaking up that damage, and now I can just spam out these Liquidations. Now my opponent's going to have to figure out if he wants to take me out with Zap Cannon, so I don't think he's going to charge it up all the way. I think he's going to want to try to farm me down so that he could have energy for Needle Queen. Uh, my opponent's gonna get a little bit greedy here, and he doesn't charge it up just quite enough. So now I'm able to throw Liquidation, and my uh, Switch Timer is up, and I can bring in Needle Queen, and he's in Poison Fang range, so I just throw the Poison Fang, and we take that win. Okay, so I can't just show you all the wins. I gotta include some losses in here, so here's a pretty hard loss. We get Giratina on the lead. I safe swap Glissapod, and unfortunately, this Giratina is running Ancient Power, so this is going to be a lost switch. I throw those liquidations hoping for a debuff, but I'm not, the game's just not gonna give me a debuff at this, this point. But guess who it does give a buff? It gives the opposing Giratina the attack boost and the defense boost. So, unfortunate for us, I decide to let Glissapod go and. Knowing that I outpace to Night Slash, I bring in Greninja, throw the Night Slash immediately. I don't want to take a boosted Ancient Power on my Greninja, or a boosted Dragon Claw. He's going to throw Dragon Claw here. No point throwing Ancient Power, yeah. Uh, but he decides to shield. Unfortunate for me, now my Greninja is half health. I get the boost on Night Slash, but because Greninja isn't healthy anymore, it's not going to help me a lot. I throw these Night Slashes at the Walrin. Good that I'm seeing the Walrin here now because Needle Queen is gonna be taking super effective from these Icicle Spears and Powder Snows. But like I said, because Greninja is low health now, Walrin's ice moves are more than enough to take me out. And he snipes me anyways with his Charizard, so I know this is already over. Uh, I can't survive. Well, I can survive a Blast Burn. I shield up anyways, but I definitely can't survive the second blast burn combined with the, the powder snow damage uh, and he also has a shield left so there really is no point in me playing this out anymore you'll see i'm really really low health here so the powder snows are going to be more than enough to take me out yeah so unfortunate we take that loss but you win some you lose some this team is still like super super strong and uh we still went positive in that set even when we lost lead we were able to flip because Galissapod, again, is a really good safe swap. So moving on to the next set and into the next battle, we have a terrible lead for Nido Queen, Swampert, the worst lead ever. So of course, immediately swapping into Galissapod, taking a Hydro Cannon, I guess he wanted to soften up the Galissapod. Maybe he doesn't have the best answers to it in the back. Again, as we're seeing with a lot of these teams, they're not really prepared to counter Galissapod. And Thinking about it, it doesn't really have any hard solid answers. I'm trying to think of what is the hardest counter to, to Galissapod. I can't think of it off the top of my head. There probably is, there definitely is. But I'm okay with losing switch to this Weezing, taking that overheat, that first overheat on my Galissapod. And now my plan is to completely poison jab down and then throw earth power at the Swamper and then hope that with shields, um, Greninja can take out whatever's in the back, and I noticed this team format because I've run this team before. Swampert usually runs with two poison types, so I know that Greninja can do pretty well, and my opponent quits the match here, so unfortunately we're not going to get to see what he has in the back, but I was probably correct, it's probably something weak to Greninja. 
Moving on to the next battle, we have an interesting and tricky lead here. So I don't really have any answers to Dragonite on my team. Needle Queen actually is my best answer, so I'm just gonna throw these Poison fang Fangs at it and uh, the Poison Jab damage is gonna start adding up. But my opponent swaps out after the first debuff and he swaps into his own Galissapod and look at that, we don't really have an answer to Galissapod on our own team. So again, showing how strong Galissapod is as a safe swap. So I swap into my own hoping I can win the mirror match, but unfortunately my opponent is running Aerial Ace which is going to be super effective. And we lose that switch, but I'm hoping that with shields I can maybe outpace to Night Slashes versus the Dragonite, and the Dragonite's low health anyways, so it's not going to be that big of an issue. And hopefully he can't reach another move on Dragonite. Uh, he brings in Swampert, which is interesting, instead of bringing in Dragonite and trying to do as much damage as he can versus my Greninja and possibly shielding his Dragonite. This is good for me, and he doesn't shield my first Hydro Cannon, which means I can just go straight Night Slash from now on. With the Water Shuriken damage, it's going to be enough to take him out. Now I want to try to leave this matchup with uh, extra energy because I want to be able to throw two Night Slashes against his Dragonite, one to take out his shield, and the other one to KO. And luckily we are able to do that, and we take that win. So Dragonite pretty tricky for this team, but Greninja is just way too spammy, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Okay, so the final match I wanted to showcase is actually against my friend. I ran into him in GBL, and uh, I actually know his team, but he said he RPSed me. I think he outplayed me because here he baited me with his Auroras, and not only that, I thought he was going to catch Liquidation on one of his back Pokemon, but he didn't do that. Instead, he built up to 8, and I should have thrown Liquidation because my uh, our fast moves are out of sync and for me not to lose that fast move i needed to throw before he threw a charged move but instead he built up to eight and i thought it was going to be meteor beam i got baited he threw weather ball so he had some energy left over on auroras and i needed that shield because i could have actually won this with double shielded needle queen in the end but unfortunately i didn't have that Anyways, I'm gonna bring in this Greninja because I know that he has Verzian in the back. <laughs> I know his team. And I know Verzian's not gonna be useful against, or sorry, I know Greninja's not gonna be useful against Verzian. And I was really hoping at this point that I could win it with Needle Queen. He doesn't have shields left because he invested both shields to win Switch against my Galissapod. Again, he brought in his Galissapod versus mine. Well, we've been seeing that quite a bit in this. Uh, this video, but uh, sadly Earth Power is not enough to KO his Auroras. If I had thrown that liquidation, his Auroras would have been lower and I might have had a chance. And my, my Nido Queen would have also been healthy for the Verzian to take, possibly take out Verzian. Yeah, but he gets that win and well played to him. I think he played that really well. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you like the team, definitely give it a try. I really think you can climb with it. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe leaving a like, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.